Our main goal for this video is to find a closed form for the following power sum. So we've got 1 to the p plus 2 to the p plus 3 to the p all the way up to n to the p where p is a natural number. So before we get started, let's look at some small cases which are easily proven with induction, which is not how we'll prove this. And so the sum of the first n natural numbers, so this is the nth triangular number. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n is n times n plus 1 over 2. Then the sum of the first n squares is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And finally, the sum of the first n cubes is n squared n plus 1 squared over 4. The really interesting thing here is that this guy right here, this n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4, is exactly this right-hand side quantity squared. Which means if we square the sum of the first n natural numbers, that's the same as the sum of the first n cubes. Which I think is a really beautiful formula. In fact, I made a crazy video on it if you want to try to find that. Okay, so in order to come up with a closed form, we need something called Bernoulli numbers. So those are defined in a somewhat technical way, but let's look into it. So let's define the nth Bernoulli number by the following power series. So we'll say the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of b sub n over n factorial times x to the n. So this is something called the exponential generating function for the nth Bernoulli number. So this is going to be x over e to the x minus 1. Now maybe as a little homework exercise, you guys could check that b sub 1 is in fact equal to negative 1 half. So I'll let you guys check that. That's not too hard to check, check just by expanding this as a geometric series and looking at the coefficient of x to the 1. Okay, nice. Now let's maybe see what we can do from this and see if we can get maybe a little nicer formula to calculate other Bernoulli numbers. Maybe something that looks like a recursion. And we can do that maybe by multiplying both sides by e to the x minus 1. That'll be kind of our path. So here we have e to the x minus 1 times our exponential generating function. The sum as n goes from 0 to infinity bn over n factorial x to the n is just equal to x. But this is actually a lot more helpful than it might seem because on the right hand side we have a very simple polynomial but on the left hand side we have essentially the product of two infinite power series. So e to the x minus 1 should really be expanded as a power series to make this make a lot of sense. Okay, so let's expand e to the x minus 1 as a power series. And we'll expand it just as we would expand e to the x, but we'll leave off the first term. Or maybe I should say the zeroth term. So this is going to be the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity of x to the m over m factorial. So that'll be e to the x minus 1. And then we have our exponential generating function for the Bernoulli number. So that's going to be the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of bn over n factorial x to the n. And that's going to be equal to x. Now we can use something called the Cauchy product formula for taking the product of these two infinite series. That's going to give us something like this. So maybe the most classic way to write it is as a double sum, but the interior sum is a finite sum. So I'll use an index r for the outside index. The sum as r goes from 0 to infinity. And then my inside will be the sum as k goes from 0 up to r. And then I'll have b sub k over k factorial. So that's like the kth term of this. And then next we'll have 1 over r minus k factorial. So that's like the r minus kth term of this. And then we'll have x to the r. So that's because we gain an x to the k from this and an x to the r minus k from this term. Then we have all of this is equal to x. But now we'll use the fact that this right-hand side is a very simple polynomial and we'll extract coefficients. 
So let's extract coefficients from, well, essentially both sides of the equation, but extracting coefficients from the right-hand side is very easy. So this gives us the sum k equals 0 up to r of b sub k over k factorial r minus k factorial is equal to 0 for all r bigger than 1. That's because we don't have an x squared, an x cubed, an x to the fourth term, or anything like that over here on the right-hand side. But this interior of the sum is like very, very close to being a binomial coefficient. And in fact, we can make it a binomial coefficient by multiplying by r factorial. That doesn't change anything because the index of the sum is k. If we multiply the right-hand side by r factorial, that's just still equal to 0. So that gives us a little nice for, a nicer format for this, and that would be the sum as k goes from 0 up to r of r choose k b sub k equals 0. And this is maybe the best recursive definition that we could take for our Bernoulli numbers. So we can think about this guy right here, b1 being negative one half as being our seed, and then this gives us our recursion. And notice the step size of our recursion depends on how far into the series we, or into the sequence we are. And now, again, I'll leave you with a little bit of a homework or a warm-up exercise, and that is to use this recursion to calculate a couple of values of the Bernoulli numbers. So let's see that b2 is equal to 1 sixth, so you can check that. And then b4 is equal to negative 1 over 30, and then b6 is equal to 1 over 42. And if you'd like more practice, you can calculate more. Okay, so now that we're warmed up with Bernoulli numbers, let's see how that will connect with this closed form for our power sum. Okay, so we're going to take a little detour into calculus, and this would generally be in a second semester of calculus when you look at Taylor series. So let's take a function f from r to r, and let's say that it's really nicely behaved, and let's look at its Taylor series based maybe centered, so based at x. And then we'll think about y as a variable. So that means we should be able to write this, f of y is equal to the sum as, maybe I'll use my index m, so m goes from zero up to infinity, of the nth derivative evaluated at x over m factorial, and then we have y minus x. So my variables are a little bit different than you might see in a textbook, but this is going to be helpful for like our uses here. Okay, so now from here I'd like to make a substitution, and I'd like to make a substitution so that this object right here, this y minus x, that should be to the nth power, is a little bit simpler. And I'll do that by replacing y with x plus y. So let's see what that leaves us with. That'll leave us with f of x plus y is equal to, we have the sum as m goes from 0 up to infinity. None of this changes. We have the nth derivative evaluated at x over m factorial. And then here we'll have y to the m. But now I can cleverly write this using an exponential operator, maybe. And that exponential operator looks like this. So this is going to be e to the y times the derivative with respect to x operating on f of x. So let's maybe just talk our way through this a little bit to see why this makes sense. So if we were to expand this guy as an operator, what would it look like? So it would look like the sum as m goes from 0 up to infinity of 1 over m factorial, and then we have y to the m, and then the mth derivative of x with respect to m. But notice taking that operator and operating on this f of x gives us exactly what we have over here. Okay, nice. 
But now what I'd like to do is factor maybe a f of x out of this. And I'll do that in the following way. I can write this as e to the y times the derivative with respect to x minus 1 times f of x plus f of x. So in, basically what I did is I just added and subtracted a copy of f of x. But that allows me to rewrite this a little bit. I can subtract an f of x to the left-hand side of the equation, and I have f of x plus y uh, minus f of x equals this e to the y d by dx minus 1 times our function f of x like that. Or maybe I should say operating on our function f of x. But now what I'd like to do is divide by this operator. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense. So instead of dividing by this operator, what I will do is multiply by its inverse. So we're kind of playing it fast and loose with the existence of such, such objects, but everything will work out in the end. So here we have e to the y uh, and then d by dx minus 1 inverse times f of x plus y minus f of x equals f of x, like that. Okay, but now what I'd like to do is take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. So if I take the derivative with respect to x here, and then I'll add a derivative with respect to x here. And then I'll also set y equal 1 just to simplify it and make it look like something that we'll use. So let's see. We're going to have d by dx, and now I'm going to abuse notation and write this as over e to the d by dx minus 1. Um, operating on f of x plus 1 minus f of x equals f prime of x. But notice this is the exponential generating function for our Bernoulli numbers. So this operator right here should be able to be expanded just like we expanded into our Bernoulli numbers where now our variable is d by dx. So this should be the sum as maybe I'll use m goes from 0 to infinity of b sub m over m factorial. And then we have the nth derivative with respect to x. Great. So let's maybe bring that formula up. And what I mean by that formula is this new series operator on this f of x plus 1 minus x equals f prime to the top and then work towards our final goal. So in the last board, we came up with the following formula. I've like re-indexed our sum and then I've actually applied the operator to those two terms. But this is essentially what we left ourselves with. And now we're going to start to tie this back to our goal, which is this power sum. And we'll do that by looking at a special function for f. And so let's let f be the following polynomial. So f of x will be the polynomial x to the p plus 1 over p plus 1. Let's notice that implies that f prime of x is just x to the p, which is nice because that looks like something that we need over here. And then we can also write down what the kth derivative of x is. That shouldn't be too hard. So let's notice that the kth derivative of f will be equal to 1 over p plus 1. And then we'll have p plus 1 times p all the way down to p minus k plus 2, and then we'll have x to the p plus 1 minus k. So we'll have something that looks like that. Okay, nice. But now notice that some of this stuff cancels. So we have this p plus 1 cancels with this p plus 1 here. And then furthermore, this is a nice descending product of k minus 1 terms. So this guy right here is in fact k minus 1 factorial times p choose k minus 1. Okay, good. So now let's insert that back into our equation up here. And that leaves us with, let's see, x to the p is equal to the sum as k goes from 0 up to infinity of b sub k over 
k factorial. And since these are both k derivatives, we can factor this constant out. That gives us k minus 1 factorial. And then p choose k minus 1. And then now we'll have x plus 1 to the power p plus 1 minus k minus x to the power p plus 1 minus k. So we have something that looks like that. But now let's simplify a little bit. Notice that this k minus 1 factorial can't quite cancel this k factorial, but it'll leave us with just a k in the denominator. Then after that, the structure of this sum over here really begs us to do some sort of summing together of things like this to produce some sort of, let's see, telescoping action. So let's do that. So let's evaluate this at 1, 2, 3, all the way up to p, and, and all the way up to n, and see what we get. So we have 1 to the p plus 2 to the p plus 3 to the p, ending at n to the p, will be equal to the sum, as k goes from 0 up to infinity, of, let's say, we have b sub k over k, and then p choose k minus 1, and then we'll have n plus 1 to the p plus 1 minus k minus 1 to the p plus 1 minus k, which is just 1. Okay, so that's just summing together all of these and noticing that everything in the middle of these sums make these things cancel right here. But let's notice we've ended with a closed form for this power sum right here, which was exactly our goal. Maybe it's not a very beautiful closed form, but it is a closed form. Furthermore, maybe I'll let you guys link this with the standard way of writing the closed form, and that is to bring out a n to the p plus 1 over over p plus 1 out front, and then we'll have a sum of some more stuff. So as a nice exercise, you can figure out the shape of that more stuff, and that's a good place to stop.